I mean, I'd like you, thank you, thank you for coming. Um, I was excited to, uh, to check your website out and all the different changes that you've made. So I'm interested to hearing your story. And thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and welcome everybody. Um, sh shall I begin, Helen? Is that good? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with everyone this morning. Um, I love being part of King. It's brought a lot of uh, amazing things to our business over the last few years. So um, I'm pretty pumped to continue doing business in uh, the area. And uh, we've had a lot of changes. Um, so first of all, I'll sort of go back to the beginning. I started a floral studio called Seasons Floral in Tottenham uh, in 2005. So 15 years ago, 16 years ago. And uh, we had it in Tottenham for about 10 years. And then we moved our family to King Township where I opened up in the Brownsville Plaza. And originally when we opened, we were just doing weddings and events and teaching workshops. I've always taught workshops kind of as a main thing that we've sort of been known for throughout the years since 2015 and, uh, or 2005, sorry. And we had this shop for about two years and then we decided to open up retail again. So I'd had retail in Tottenham initially. Uh, when we opened up retail, we did really, really well and uh, continued to do workshops. And uh, I've always had this sort of um, idea to sort of get online education really rolling with our business. Um, because sometimes we'd have students that couldn't make a workshop or we'd have people in the industry that were asking us how we were doing things. And I really wanted to start that. So in 2018, we started developing what we now call Public Academy. Uh, which initially was going to be an online education platform for mostly industry related um, students. So people that have floral shops, things like that was my initial idea. Um, and I wanted to develop and create workshops and sort of training videos so that they'd have somewhere to go as a portal to sort of train their staff because I found that me myself being a solopreneur uh, is always difficult when you're training staff and you, of course, always bring them in when it's busy. So there's limited time that you can spend with them. It's a very challenging thing in a lot of, uh, a lot of our industry. Um, you know, you bring in seasonal staff and that's when it's busiest and it's hard to really get the one-on-one -on -one training. So I thought videos would probably be very helpful. So we started filming and we started filming in the beginning of 2020. And that's when the pandemic hit. And I had also said to my husband, you know, it'd be really cool training these videos. I was doing a sort of a bridal bouquet video and things like that. I said, it would be really helpful. I think if we could ship the product um, as well as, as teach the video, because we'd sort of done a few that we thought maybe hobbyists would do, or maybe DIY brides would do. Um, and then we started looking at things like HelloFresh and all these kinds of subscription programs that were going on with getting food to your door. And we actually started diving in ourselves as a family and trying all those platforms to see how it rolled out, what we really liked about it. Um, so we tried all the different food boxes to our, our home just to see what we really liked about the experience. And I, a big thing about the HelloFresh that I thought was missing was video because I feel like my kids who are seven or sorry, who are 11 and 17 really don't do much without video <laughs> so I wanted to get that opportunity out to people so we sort of streamlined our process a little bit and uh, decided to offer kits so floral kits uh, by doing subscriptions so we have monthly subscribers uh, they sign up online and they get a floral package delivered to their home once a month and in that kit is everything they need to create a beautiful flower arrangement, as well as they get a link to a live Zoom tutorial, which is how we're doing it right now. Um, but we also upload to YouTube. So they have a catalog video that they can keep and they can resource that if, as they want to, you know, practice their skills or redo an arrangement or whatnot. So they get to keep that in their portfolio. 
Uh, with that program, we also launched a YouTube channel where we talk about flowers and we describe flowers so that it becomes a little bit less intimidating. That was our, that was my big thing. I always have students come into workshops over the last 15 years and say to me, you know, I don't know anything about flowers and I'm really nervous because this is a really scary thing for me to try. And I always say, you know, let's take that intimidation out of floral design and get mm -hmm. people really excited about flowers because it's such a beautiful thing to have surrounding yourself with. I feel with the pandemic, it's been uh, really paramount for people to get into something creative in their homes while they've been, um, you know, on, on the lockdown, as well as having the opportunity to create and dive into that skill. Um, so it's, that's been really amazing. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, so okay. you don't, you don't have your seasons floral anymore, your, your uh, footprint there? Well, that was interesting. So whenever this took off, we started last, we actually launched our brand new website last October. Um, and right away, uh, we got a major uh, industry that was interested in doing um, team, team building workshops. So our corporate took off, which I was not expecting <laughs> at all. Um, and through the winter season, we did, I'm going to say we did almost 30 corporate workshops and we were boxing and shipping from seasons uh, with our new brand and trying to sort of really get that going as well as, of course, keeping up with our busy winter season, which is always crazy. Um, so at that point, I guess I should back up just a little bit to let you guys know when we had first initially had this idea. Um, I have a cousin that does my websites. She's actually in um, BC, but she's always looking for grants and funding for her, um, for her, um, for her patrons. So she said to me, why don't you go and try to see what grants are available in your area? So I'd reached out to a couple of things in York region and I ended up um, chatting quite a bit with Vivian who works for Weisbeck, which is a, uh, let me get this right, York Region uh, Small Business Economic Center, I think it is. Um, anyway, she was fantastic, um, but she also let me know because we had originally started talking in 2019 that a lot of the grants were sort of focused towards students developing new businesses and for brand new entrepreneurs, which I didn't qualify for because I had been in business for 15 years. So she then reached out to me in March of 2020 and said, are you still working on your idea? And I said, yes, I, in fact, we're, you know, we're filming and everything's going really great. And I actually want to start a subscription business as part of it. And she said, I think I have a good fit for you for the grant because of COVID we've shifted uh, the startup plus program and focused it with, uh, brand new businesses that have had to pivot due to the pandemic. And I said, well, that's us. <laughs> this is great. So we applied and we were uh, very grateful to get their assistance. So when this all started rolling out um, in, I believe, October, November, I got the initial grant. And with that came an amazing uh, mentor program, as well as online training, which sort of as someone being in business for 15 years, as, as some of you know, that are starting or that have, um, that have, you know, changed your business or just, you know, had to reinvent. It's really nice to be able to get back to those core things that give us um, some direction. Because as an entrepreneur, I know many of you are, it's very easy to have all these ideas and keep flowing with them and just not know how to sort of focus and get to the next stages. So I found their help really, really amazing um, just to sort of streamline where we wanted to go, our focus, our direction. And also um, with the product that we were coming out with, I was hoping that it was something that was new to the market and we were really gonna um, you know, be able to deliver something that's 
um, sort of, you know, got lots of many layers is, and, and gives a lot of um, opportunity for um, different people as well as corporations. And our mentor was so great. She was like, this idea you have, it's going to be fantastic. And she was just so, um, so enthusiastic about it that we just kept the ball rolling. Um, so then as Therese was mentioning, um, as the winter season rolled out, uh, it was crazy. We had so many workshops. I was doing workshops, live tutorials every hour, sometimes three times a day <laughs> in the evenings, just to kind of get through the um, bookings that we had for our corporate clients. So I took a long look in January, as we often do, look back on the past year and sort of reflect on what went well, what didn't went, what didn't go well. And when I had spoken with my mentor through the um, grant program, a lot of my, um, I guess, time was being used for seasons. Um, and I was nervous that I was not gonna have that time that I needed to dedicate for Pedal Academy. So she had just outright said to me, maybe you just need to let that store go for a while or close it until you can get this really rolling. And I was, I, I felt something inside me. I didn't want to let the community down because we have become a really great staple, I think in the community. And I was fearful that if I did that, I would just break a lot of people's hearts as well as my own a little bit because I love the store and I didn't want to let it go. So I, really thought about it. And then in February, March, just, I just sort of thought it's time. Maybe I should just reach out to the community and see if there is someone who would love my little store as much as I do and want to take it to the next level. And, uh, and I felt like my time was becoming uh, more and more um, scarce <laughs> for the retail end of it. So I had a friend who has been in the industry for about eight years and she's worked for me in the past and she was working in Tottenham and she'd been managing a store for seven years and something inside me told me to reach out to her before anyone else. We had talked about working together in the past partnerships or bringing her on full time. And I know that with my business, I really felt like it would be paramount to have someone come in and be the main person. I feel like sometimes when you bring in that chief executive person to sort of run your business, it can be very difficult because you two have two different ideas. And I really felt like I really wanted to focus on Pedal Academy and having that time where I would have to train that person would be also very, um, it would take a lot of time, right? So I thought, okay, maybe that that's not really what I want. I don't wanna hire someone full time. And maybe she's ready. Maybe she's ready to own her own store. So before I decided to, you know, list it or post it, um, I talked to her and she was two thumbs up. She was like, yep, I'm ready. This is a great time for me. And just timing all aligned. And so the end of May, the transaction closed and she is now the owner. And I am heading up Pedal Academy full time. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes it's hard to make those decisions, isn't it? But when you do, it's a little bit like a load off your back. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It Especially is. Especially when it all falls in place. Yes. And I, I found that I think a lot of times when we look at our, our business, <laughs> there are aspects of it that really work. And then there are aspects of it that, that need to change sometimes in order to sort of get everything streamlined exactly the way you want it. And I feel with the retail, with where I'm going with Pedal Academy, it was just a lot of um, dedication, hours, hands-on production, all that sort of thing that was really gonna um, deviate my time to something else where I, my heart really was ready to go. And I do think that when it's time to move on, everything sort of aligns. So it worked out really, really well. Nice. So where do you do the videos out of? We actually are working out of uh, our home studio right now. Um, but we do, we're working on moving into a warehouse, which is in Schaumburg. Uh, so that's going to hopefully be within the next year. That's what we hope. 
Um, I'm still sort of piggybacking off of seasons for storage and for use right now. Um, well, we kind of execute our fall program and our winter program, but I'm hoping by next spring, we'll sort of have a good space that we can, we, we can work out of. I have a little space, um, in the plaza that I'm hoping will turn into our warehouse. So, um, that is something that we're looking forward to, but right now we, um, we work uh, with our home studio. I have a little home office that we set up here. So my little, um, I do all my prototypes here. Um, and then we do our Zoom. My husband is very uh, tech oriented. So he has helped us get, we actually got a second grant from uh, the Windsor, the Windsor Essex uh, business group down there. And it was a women's, it was focused on women entrepreneur. Um, and that allowed us to buy a lot of equipment for Pedal Academy, um, which has been amazing. That allowed us to buy a brand new uh, film camera. And as well as uh, we have a Yeti mic set up in over my uh, work counter. So I have that all set up as well as like all of our uh, monitors. We have a couple of monitors so I can see myself working as well as my students. And we also have a, a camera that shoots above the um, table so you can see my hands working as well as the front view. So all that sort of came together with my husband's help because he's very knowledgeable in those areas. Um, but the grant that we got from the Windsor Essex helped us purchase a lot of some high-end um, production equipment that we were gonna need to do this. So that's been, that was very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Was it the York Region small business people that helped find the Windsor Essex one? Or did you yes. find that on your own? Yeah. Yes, it was, Teresa. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, um, I know there's other other um people there that help out, but we worked with Vivian and uh she's amazing. She's just been a great resource for information and as well as pointing us in directions of other grants that were available for us. Um, and I was really nervous actually to apply for a grant because I'd never done that with my business before. Um, but she was very, very helpful. And once you do one, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> you can, you can start sort of seeing what's out there. And, and I have to say like having a business for 15 years and never utilizing those resources is probably one of those things that I regret because I think if I had looked into a lot of those programs initially when I had my business or even sort of as we moved along, um, there would have been some great things that you could do with, with the resources that a lot of communities offer. Um, so that's something I wouldn't shy away from. Or, and definitely I, as I, you know, sort of coach the new owner of seasons and other entrepreneurs that have, have come to me for help in the past, I, definitely recommend that um, just because it's something I didn't do initially. Um, we were always involved with, you know, we did some um, entrepreneur classes before I started my business and things like that, but I never really dove into um, using grants or the local um, community. I, I, we, we did use uh, Focus, I think, when we were up in Tottenham um, and they were a good resource for um, doing, you know, business, um, plans and things like that. Um, but that was quite a long time ago <laughs> and there was no grants. <laughs> so. so was it just uh, three grants that you took advantage of or, or was that two? I just had two. Yeah. Sure. So there was the one from Weisbeck and then the one from the Windsor Essex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But together they were great. The one from Weisbeck really focused a lot on marketing which has been great. Uh, they used a local company, actually, Digital Marketing Experts. It's a girl in um, King City who was doing our online training. And um, so every week we would meet for two hours and she would do an online instruction on everything from, you know, learning how to use social media a little bit better with your business to doing SWOT analysis. So your strengths, your weaknesses, all those sort of uh, things that we don't typically look at a lot of times with our businesses. Um, so that was really great. Uh, and I do say like, I think what I've learned most is sort of to pick a planning time with your business 
you know, if it's a, if it's an hour a week or it's, it's a day a month or something where you can really focus and get back to all those things that you want to do and where you're at and where you want to go and create a path so that you can sort of steer that business exactly where you want it to go. Um, that's been something that that's been, um, great. And so I'm reflecting back on all these things that we've learned through the portals and, um, the programming and, um, you know, making a plan for where the business is going to go in the future. Mm -hmm. My neighbor, my neighbor said, Oh, have you ever done this pedal Academy? We should try this. I'm going, yes, we should try this. I better mm -hmm. try it one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I when know someone else who has the monthly subscription and she's really enjoying it too. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. We also offer a wreath subscription. So we do that every season. So we do spring, summer, fall, winter. And then we also do holiday subscription as well. So we have it set up so that if you just want to do a holiday bundle, you can do an Easter arrangement, Thanksgiving and something at, um, for the holidays, uh, for Christmas. And then, um, that can be your subscription as well. So our monthly subscribers get their box every, it's usually every second week. We actually have a class tonight. So it's every second uh, week of the month. Initially, we were going to offer weekly and bi-weekly boxes as well. Um, because the corporate took off so much, <laughs> we have sort of backed away from that right now. But I am hoping that perhaps, you know, in, the, in a year or two, we may revisit that. And the biggest reason for that is I find that with our students as they grow and they sort of you know develop a really good skill set they may want to get just flowers delivered and then just a kit that they can sort of play around with without the vessel and maybe not needing the tutorial as well so that's something that we're going to look into in the future um, as as we go um, I guess I should talk a little bit about what's going to happen after the pandemic, um, because we all know that sooner or later, it's going to end. So a lot of people have asked me what my plan is after the pandemic and what we think, we, if we think this is gonna continue, if we think this is going to uh, still, you know, be viable after that. And it is, it is a scary uh, situation for us because obviously the pandemic is what brings out the, you know, ability to ship these things and have it come to your home. And that's great. But as you all know, as we're sitting here on zoom, we all do miss people. <laughs> and as in the past, I've really loved doing in-person workshops. That has been something I've been doing since we opened in 2005, we used to rent the local lion's hall and have groups of 20 and 30 come and do workshops. And oftentimes I would invite a local restaurant to come and give a little sample a little, um, you know, de demonstration of how they cook a certain meal. And then the students would, you know, get a little sample of food and they would do the workshop. So that's kind of been that all encompassing. I always try to hit all the senses when you're out for an evening, you know, food, you know, scent, taste, everything, all the, all the senses. So, um, that that's always been a great thing. Those were amazing. When we were in Tottenham, we used to work a lot with freedoms in, we used to bring in local chefs from some of the local golf courses from Woodington, and they would do little demonstrations of food. So I miss that. And I do think that there is a place for that. One thing that I know the corporate have mentioned to me as being a huge thing that has been great for them with this pandemic is having online workshops takes out a lot of their liability as far as getting people to an event place and also when you look at how you like to spend your evening a lot of times people like to have a glass of wine or a drink while they're doing something uh, out with other uh, associates and so it takes away that fear of the you know going over the limit with the driving and that sort of thing also weather sometimes when people corporations plan events they have um, inclement weather which can cause cancellations they also sometimes have to look at booking um, the attendance into a venue to spend the evening. So there's a huge cost associated with that as well. So when you look at those boxes mm -hmm. being checked off, the corporate online really ticks, you know, takes care of a lot of those worries 
and liability on the corporation's end. So I think corporate will always be something that we will do uh, online. Um, and I do feel that sometimes with just, you know, regular folks wanting to do something online or doing a, a, a class, like whether it be painting or floral design, sometimes just getting all of the ingredients delivered to your door and doing it like HelloFresh is easy because you can do it whenever you want. You're not rushed. You're not trying to hit a timeline. You just open up the box and do it at your leisure. So those things are definitely a plus, but I have had corporate already ask me if we were going to do live events. And uh, for sure, I think that that is something that we will do in the future because I know myself getting to teach online was a huge curve because I love to be able to walk around and see what students are doing and how they're creating and how, what challenges they're having and helping them in person is always a great, um, it's just a great feeling. You just, you know, you just get a better feeling from that, just to be honest. Um, and then also the expression of how you teach online and getting people enthusiastic. It's just a little bit of a different vibe. So it took us a while to sort of really get that going. Um, so that I felt really comfortable teaching online. I think we've got it uh, down really well now. Um, but you know, we're going into our, our ninth month now <laughs> of teaching online. So it's, uh, it was definitely uh, in the beginning, I felt very sort of frozen sort of when you're talking on camera and trying to get people to open up and share with you their, if they're having a challenge with creating something or, uh, you know, if they needed help, I feel like it's a little bit harder for them to um, come forward with those questions. When you're live, it's a little bit easier. Um, and I, for one, I like to have a lot of fun when I teach. Um, I know I've taught a lot of live classes for, in the community. Um, and, mm. you know, I know Kelly's on our, on our board, Kelly Foley. I've had a lot of fun with her group over the, over the last few years, teaching live workshops. Um, obviously not last year, we did a Zoom, but uh, in the past we've done some team building with her crew and it's just been a real riot. Um, so I do miss that. And I do think that, um, Sometimes corporate need that too. Sometimes you need that. Um, even though, you know, the safer route is the Zoom. Um, I think that eventually we will sort of pivot into doing a few live events a year. Mm -hmm. Darlene, mm -hmm. quick question here. When, when you're talking about this, it's, it's awesome, but how do you actually in the future get yourself out of it? So it's not so focused on just you because you've only got so many hours in the day and and I know you you work like crazy but how do you do that in the future what do you what what are well, your thoughts I have a plan with that we are I'm already sort of putting together a, a job description basically of getting some online student teachers or teachers okay. for students um, I'd really love to have, I, being in the industry, I've been in the industry since uh, 1992, <laughs> if you can believe it. So uh, I, and I finished college in 94. So I've been working pretty much full time since 95 um, and always in the floral industry. So I have a pretty good caliber of acquaintances and some amazing people that I've worked with in the past. So initially I'm gonna reach out to them and see if they're interested in becoming a Petal Academy instructor and sort of slowly build my portfolio, almost like Peloton so that we can build it. And we've got different instructors and as corporations get familiar with different teachers, they'll be able to request a certain teacher or I'd really like to streamline it so that we all have our strengths of what we do well with our design styles and be, offer, be able to offer, you know, modern design is taught by such and such instructor, um, organic is taught by, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions out there? <laughs> I was wondering who the new owner is. Oh yes. So the new owner of Seasons is Jacqueline Top Parsons. And uh, like I mentioned, she has been in the industry for eight years, I believe. Um, and she did start working with me, helping with weddings in Tottenham uh, in 2009, I believe. Um, so she's, she's really loved the industry since she got into it. She had a manager, uh, managing background in her caliber of work. Um, and she's 
been managing a store over there for seven years. So she was really ready to sort of take the next step. Um, as she mentioned to, uh, you get to a point, I think when you're in a creative industry where you really have that mindset of, I can work for other people, um, or I can own my own store. And that, I think with floral design, it really sort of opens up that, um, opportunity where, you know, it's great to have that flexibility when you're uh, your own entrepreneur. And there's a lot of things that that offers. And you also have to be ready though, I think. Um, like for me, I worked for 15 years before I opened a studio of my own. So I worked for quite a lot of stores down in Toronto and then in Aurora, as well as Newmarket before I felt really comfortable to take the reins and um, start my own business. And my daughter was 18 months old when I started my business, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it all worked out. It was really, really good. Um, but she's definitely, she's definitely got a lot to add to it. And I think she's just sort of feeling the getting the groove right now. It's been, it's been, I think when you buy an existing business, it's really um, beneficial because you're already buying clients. So we already had our online business set up, which has been doing amazing because of the pandemic. A lot of people have utilized that service um, where before it was a lot of in-person sales. So right away, you know, her, her Shopify is ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and she's just got to navigate through that as well as wanting to add her own, um, you know, different experiences in store, as well as what she's going to offer her own offerings online as well as in, in person so that she's just working that out right now. I think she's planning on having a grand opening in September, I believe. Mm -hmm. Nice. I've taken um, one of your courses with Kelly and it was amazing. And um, I always intended on doing the, um, the Christmas tree one mm -hmm. with the, the hanging ball at the end. Yeah. But I could never do it with your, uh, with your schedule. I was, I was excited to see that you had it uh, available online. Yes. So that, uh, that's, that was exciting. Your, your um, kits that you send out, how long do they last for? So if you, if you um, once you receive your box, do you have to do preparation for your, for, um, um, yeah, that's a good question. So generally right now, um, when we ship, we have a card inside. So we've modeled our um, boxes oh, after someone that I admire down in uh, California. She's called Farm Girl Flowers. You guys should check her out. She's amazing. Um, she ships boxes and in, in the box is a card up at the top. And inside the box is all the instructions on how to create um, or how to take care of your flowers before the tutorial. So we give instructions in there, it's five points, you know, have water nearby, trim your stems and put them in a vase before the tutorial begins. Generally we ship so that the florals, we request that you create the arrangement within 48 hours after receiving the box is usually the best, um, just to get those flowers into water. Uh, we do use a um, uh, online, um, or sorry, we use a um, biodegradable, um, foam, which we use for shipping the florals. So it comes in a little biodegradable bag with an elastic and it's foam. Um, and we use that and it, those last probably about 36 hours. I'm, I'm assuming, um, at the max, if with shipping, we're also shipping with FedEx, um, for some of our far outreach areas. So we've been able to offer for our corporate shipping across, um, Ontario. We're just doing Ontario right now. Um, but we can ship anywhere in Ontario, usually within 48 hours. So that gives us that window um, so that they can get the product and into water. I will mention, we have had a couple of instances where it has been extremely hot this summer. Mm -hmm. um, and I chose to send um, peonies <laughs> in, in June. <laughs> Uh, which of course, that's one of my favorite flowers. So I was like peonies, yeah. everybody has to have peonies. Yeah. So I was shipping peonies and, uh, I will say with the pandemic for the local growers, 
it has been challenging. A lot of them took out some of their crops. So availability has become uh, less than it was a couple of years ago. That has been a little bit of a challenge. I find uh, where you we like to utilize Ontario grown flowers as much as possible. So we utilize the Ontario flower clock as well as the growers at food terminal, um, as well as we just have some, um, you know, private growers that grow for us as well. And so that's been, that's been a challenge. So I got these beautiful peonies. We shipped them in June. Um, we're still sort of trying to navigate through that. We had some for our outreach clients with that we shipped with FedEx with that particular box and some of them got a little too hot. So we, we obviously we do a full replacement when that happens and try to ensure everybody's happy. We want people to love their flowers, not, <laughs> not regret um, <laughs> what's happening, but it is, it is a fact of flowers. They um, you know, we don't often know when they've been harvested or, or what condition they've been in before we get them and then we're shipping them. So we, you know, it's a big risk sometimes on our end of, uh, you know, having to ship a perishable item. I'm sure uh, HelloFresh has the same issues. I always, we've, we're still getting HelloFresh here and it's amazing how they change their packaging through the year. So I'm really focusing on that just to see what we could in, integrate into our packaging that would really help that far reach areas that we want to offer get the fresh product um, looking fantastic when it arrives on the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one concern like with the HelloFresh and those things is the garbage that you create from that. Like, is that uh, a concern? Is there a way around that? Yes, I, I, do, I know as well. Like we are trying to be very conscientious. Our boxes are cardboard. So they're obviously you can break them down, put them in the recycling. Our packaging that the flowers go in at the base where the water source is, is also 100% biodegradable. So that's something that we're conscientious about. Other than that, we send a vessel that is either tin, glass, or ceramic. So they can keep that. So it's reusable or, you know, maybe you can give it to a friend after you learn the skill and create a new arrangement. Um, and then everything else in the box, uh, we send some tissue. Should have, I should have took a picture of a box for you guys. Maybe I can send one to Helen. She can send it out. Um, but yeah, so there, everything else in there, as far as I know, is pretty much uh, biodegradable tissue and there's some paper, but recyclable or biodegradable. Mm -hmm. You're well, seeing... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Thank you. Um, Darlene, do you do like one-offs or is that only from your store that was seasons? Um, like I'm, I'm looking for a flower arrange arrangement that I'd love to send to somebody. I don't think they'd be able to do their own arrangement at this stage. They are, you know, they're, they're, they are unwell. Um, you don't send anything like that, do you? And, and do you have a suggestion as, as seasons, they're sort of near Tottenham. So is that a place they could purchase or I could get them to be delivered from there? Yes, definitely. A lot of, okay. a lot of people did reach out to me after the sale and say, you know, are you still doing anything? And no, I am not. Sadly, I, right. we obviously, we signed a non-compete whenever I sold the business. Okay. And I would definitely recommend going to see Jackie. She's fantastic. And uh, she can she can definitely create something beautiful. That and she also, uh, just so you guys know, um, we have an amazing delivery service that we've utilized with Seasons over the last fifteen years. Okay. Um, so Seasons can deliver anywhere in the GTA as well as Fabulous. most of the outlying areas, mm -hmm. right okay. from the studio. Mm -hmm. So it's great. She's great. She's got a lot of uh, geography she can cover. Fabulous. Thank you. So it's called Seasons, like plural. Yes. That's it. Seasons Floral Studio. Mm -hmm. Super. Thank you so much. You're welcome. On, on your um, um, your seasonal ones, do do they last a long time or are they just a uh, yes? Um, the wreaths that we offer are generally a um, hundred percent. You can keep it for forever if you want. Um, they do sometimes require a little bit of maintenance. The winter wreath that we offer usually incorporates a little bit of fresh materials. 
but you can remove that fresh and then keep the base and change them. And oftentimes when I'm teaching a lot of the permanent workshops is if we will call them permanent um, for the wreaths and whatnot, uh, we often give a lot of storage recommendations so that we teach the students how to store it properly as well as if they wanted to change it or use it in another way. We give them lots of suggestions and little tips on uh, how they can reinvent what they've created for the next season. Because sometimes if you make a spring wreath or a summer wreath, you know, you have it on the door and you're looking at it every time you're bringing in the groceries and, you know, you kind of get tired of it maybe after the first season or after a couple seasons and you're like, hmm, what can I do with this? So that's a big, a big thing. We've always been really um, trying to come, you know, get across to our students students is portrayed to our students is that, you know, a lot of things when you make them, they have that ability to be reused in a different way. So we often, that's a really big thing that we push with our workshops is how to do that and how to comfortably take something apart and reuse it um, so that, so that they can stretch it to another, another way of using it, which is great. You know, if they want to create a table centerpiece out of a wreath they've made, we give them those suggestions so that they can, um, feel comfortable doing that. Mm -hmm. Gotta go sign up for the wreath one. Awesome. <laughs> I've already decided I'm sending my uh, my uh, daughters-in-law one for, to start off their season at Christmas. Yes. So Beautiful. Yeah, they, they're an amazing gift. We did, um, we had a lot of activity with the gift giving last Christmas, uh, the, the holiday season, um, just for that exact reason, people couldn't get together. We had families doing their own Christmas centerpieces together on zoom, which was great. Um, so just to sort of recap on that, um, Robin, when you were asking, we do have a minimum with our, uh, private classes that we offer through the corporate. So we have a seasonal catalog that we send out to anyone that's interested in doing a large group event. Uh, we have a minimum of eight that we take for classes. Um, so we'll ship a minimum of eight boxes and uh, we have usually quite a bit of availability um, through the later two weeks of the month to teach our corporate classes. Generally, we find uh, with corporate or with private classes that we can do them sometimes late afternoon or early evening um, and they are exactly one hour. So we have them time so that you, we do a welcome we introduce our product so that everyone gets familiar with what they're using and can learn the names of the product. That's always a, a very big thing that we're trying to advocate as well. Um, and then we dive into the design and we do a basically almost like a step-by-step -step with the students so that everyone's working at a similar pace. Um, and then, you know, if they need to go back and you look at that replay afterwards, they get that as a, a resource as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lisa? Um, Darlene, can you hear me? Yep. Oh, great. Um, what was I thinking now? Uh, I think I, our business has fared fairly well up until this point, but I think that the, the monthlies have never changed and sales being down because of COVID. I think I'm looking for some help now. What, what's the fastest way to, to search down resources as far as um, support from York Region? Is there a contact that you could make? I find it really overwhelming. I, I look it up and there's so many options and yeah. Okay, I, I can send you Vivian's contact information. Yeah. Oh, so I can go straight to somebody like that and they can help at this point. Is that what you're thinking? Okay, that'd be awesome. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely recommend uh, Vivian and, and her um, group there. They've been uh, really, really amazing. They even, they even came after and did a, a video of us at Seasons um, to sort of, you know, uh, it was a little marketing video for them, but, um, they came out and, and that turned out, I was so impressed with all of their, um, videography and everything they put together there. That was, that was a really fun and, um, awesome marketing thing for us too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Darlene, just so you know, again, for the benefit of everyone, I put some links in the chat box and one of them is a link to your success story video there from York Small Business Enterprise Center. And, and again, I, I can't, uh, Lisa, again, a reach out to, to Vivian is, uh, is a really good thing to do. 
Um, they are there as a resource for all of York Region or all of uh, the northern part of York Region. And uh, the more that uh, King Township businesses and entrepreneurs uses them, the better. And uh, again, there's uh, I've also put some links to uh, to the two grants that Darlene mentioned she was able to, to leverage. Unfortunately, one of them's closed right now. But again, maybe they'll reopen that up using using some funding. So um, the the one uh, starter plus program that Darlene uh, accessed actually has another intake that closes uh, tomorrow. So I don't think it's too late for anyone that's interested in applying for that. And I know, uh, Helen, I believe you sent it out in the e-blast to your members this week. So yeah, they're, they're a great resource. So by all means, uh, you should take advantage of them being there for us. Yeah, I hope everyone watches this video because I feel like when you hear a real life story about someone that uses it, it hits home a little more than Jamie always saying, well, you could try here and you're always giving us so many resources, but this really hits it home better. And, and Lisa, like I was really intimidated to try to get a grant. Um, like I said, if I had 15 years, I'd never even, I was just nervous and thought, oh, I'll never get it. And it was really a seamless pro process. It was so once I did one, I was like, okay, it's really not that hard. Yeah, it was great. It sounds also like she helped with, like you said, your mentor too, right? That she also helped you sort of uh, refine your ideas and where you wanted to go, not yes. just getting the grant, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had a mentor, uh, Christina, I can't remember her last name, but she is a, a entrepreneur um, teacher at Seneca. Um, and she's also involved with a uh, Helix program that they do, which is uh, <laughs> a small business uh, entrepreneur mentorship for young students. And uh, she was amazing. She has so much energy and so much knowledge of, she started quite a few businesses on her own and then has uh, sold them off over the years. And uh, now she's teaching and um I, we really connected. We, we hit it off right off the bat and I'm still going to utilize her as my path continues because I was just so pleased with how she really saw what we had. And she just gave us some really great um, insight on how to scale and the next steps that we needed to take um, to sort of, you know, really get this thing hit it out of the park. So um, she was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Do, do you think you go through the mentoring uh, program to help uh, another entrepreneur? Yes, I would definitely. Yeah. yeah. I always, uh, I've always been a big advocate of uh, like, like, like Teresa said, when you hear someone else's story, it sort of, um, it can really, you know, make, make it not so intimidating, make life not so hard. Right. And, and, and a little bit more, um, I don't know, just, it's just that sort of one-on-one. -on -one. And I, like all entrepreneurs have had many successes and many, many failures. <laughs> and I feel like over the last 15 years, it, it does take its time. It's a ladder. I do say it's a ladder and I, you have to really enjoy the climb and it's going to have some setbacks and it's going to have some um, hard times. But I think overall, I am, very excited that I became an entrepreneur and uh, it's allowed me so much freedom and challenges and strategic thinking and brought out all these things that I normally, all I really wanted to do was open a flower shop. <laughs> and uh, over the years, it's just brought out all these skill sets that I didn't know I naturally had. Um, and when you sort of look at your path and your journey, you can really see how all those things um, came to where we are now. And, and I often sit there and think, you know, my biggest thing always, I think over the last probably 10 years was always like, I know there's something else there for me that I want to do. And I, I just don't know what it is. And then all of a sudden this just came and it was, it was it. And I, the girl that does my website, who's, who's also my husband's cousin, my cousin, I said to her, you know, it's too bad I didn't think of this years ago. And she said, Darlene, it took you all these years so that you are where you are now and you wouldn't be able to offer what you're offering if you didn't have those last 10 years under your belt. Yeah. So always the delay 
is serving you. <laughs> I'm a big, big person with that statement. It's, it's, we all want to have that success right out the gate. Um, but I will say I have, I've loved every minute of the last 15 years because it's brought me to where I am now. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's, it's, um, it's almost 10 o'clock. Does anybody have a last question for Darlene? Okay. I'd like to thank you, Darlene, for uh, joining us. It's been a uh, love to hear your story. Uh, really enjoyed it. Um, uh, it was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thanks again, everybody, for having me on today. If, if anybody wants to reach out um, with any questions, please feel free. You can reach out. I think Jamie put some links in there, but my uh, direct email for um, Pedal Academy is info at pedalacademy.com. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I've, I'd love to help anyone that's got any questions anytime. I'm, you know, I always say everything we learn, we're here to share it. So please don't be shy. If you have any questions, yeah. let me know and I'd be happy to help with your journeys. I, lo I love, I love entrepreneurship. So <laughs> hit me with, hit me with your questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. That was awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, Darlene. Thanks guys. Thank, thank you so you. much. Bye-bye now. Have a great bye. day.